Anthony Kiedis. This is so weird. This is just strange. And uh, you just never know what the day is going to bring. Um, before I get carried away or sidetracked into a surreal daydream, I would like to say that this is really on behalf of the Red Hot Chili Peppers because I have been lucky enough to write a bunch of songs, but always with the band. And that's my band, and those are my brothers, and we started something together, and... I, you know, maybe because I, um, I went to school here for a year in 1980. They singled me out of the band, but really this, you know, for whatever this is, this accomplishment or this work in progress or whatever you want to call it, it's for my band. Um, one of whom is, is with me tonight for, for later. So, um, I, you know, I think that receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award is quite dangerous and uh, potentially detrimental to your career. Because I don't want to be done at all, and I don't want to be... I don't want to be irrelevant or disconnected from, from the things that inspired me to begin with, because, you know, it's, it's the, it happens to poets and popular songwriters. You know, they start off and they have such a great connection to life and what it is to be connected to humanity and the common experience. And then we, we get successful and rich and, you know, the awards start coming and suddenly have really nothing to say. So I live in fear of that a little bit and I've tried to figure out how to stave that off for as long as possible. But I am grateful nonetheless and I'm grateful for the experience of what it is to be, you know, pointed out for someone who writes songs because that's what I love to do and I don't know what George and Ira think about this tonight um, but I, I guess if I had to relate to one of the two I would relate to Ira because he was the lyricist and you know when I was a kid I, I really did love words I loved the look of words the sound of words the meaning of words the origin of words the inherent rhythm and melody that words seem to come with and the innuendos. And I was just like, my dad was into words. He taught me about words. I was like, yeah, I love words. And when I was 12, I think I, I proclaimed that I'm, I'm going to be a singer when I grow up. And the, the weird part about that is I was a horrible singer and I really had no musical acumen or tone or anything at all, but I liked the way that music made me feel, and that's why I said that. I didn't say it because I thought I was this great singer, but when I would listen to the radio and I would hear music, it, it filled me up so strong and made me feel so alive and so turned on and excited and full of ideas that even at a very young age, I knew, okay, let me just be involved in this somehow. And then it turned out I had no musical talent. But quietly along the way, all of my very best friends were woodshedding on their instruments and learning about music and practicing every day. And, and I was just around them long enough so that one day they're like, hey, put your words to use over there and come make a song with us. And that, that's kind of how it panned out for me. And then I got to sort of learn a little bit about music along the way, but really I just got lucky. I got lucky by being in the right place at the right time with my friends and watching their work ethic and their dedication and, and just whatever I had to offer seemed to blend with that. So 
That was my experience, and um, I'm very grateful and very appreciative that, that anybody cares, and I, and I hope that it, it lasts for a long time. And right now, right now we're in the middle of writing a bunch of new music to make another record. Um, one of my main, you know, my George is called Flea, and he shattered his elbow, so we've, we've sort of been, you know, on this little hiatus, and that's why we're doing things like this, so... Uh, th things happen for a reason, and, and now I'm just gonna shut up, and we're gonna play a couple of songs, and just thank you.